Another jester rant is coming. Be forewarned. Now, I might be a little bit late to the party on this news because um, I saw something regarding Harley Quinn the other day about a new adaptation about her character that's going to be on the new show Batman Caped Crusader. And what I'm going to do in this video is explain to you why it made me so upset and why this character is the most destroyed character ever ever like i'm not just talking the most destroyed character in terms of dc comics or comics in general i'm not talking about even in terms of my own bias for it obviously i am biased towards it because this character means the most to me out of any character but the reason but i, I mean objectively like if we were to look at characters who have fallen so far from what they're supposed to be and what they were this would be objectively the biggest character destruction the most destroyed character the most ruined character i have ever seen and i know a whole lot i know mo about this lore behind this more than anyone else so uh this news came out about a new um a, a new version of the character who's going to be on the show batman cape crusader and I was kind of interested in it because I saw I I wanted to see a new animated version of the character that has a jester suit again, and uh, then I go into the article and if what I saw in that article and and you will understand in a minute when I explain to you guys the history, uh, it is good that I did not do a video on it right away because when I saw it in the article what was written I felt like I was about to go into a straight jacket like i started laughing and because of all the years and of history i have with this and what i saw in the article was talking about how this version of harley is going to be separate from the joker she's gonna be her own woman she's gonna uh, uh you know she's not even gonna have the joker in her backstory which makes the character entirely pointless it's gonna be a completely different character essentially with the same name and I don't know, a couple attributes that are the same. And you might be wondering right now, what's the problem? Because obviously with characters, there are plenty of times where they get reimagined for alternate universes or reconstructed. And well, I'm going to tell you why the history. So I got into Harley 10 years ago and I was really, really taken with the character more than any other character I knew. I, I first was exposed to her in Batman the Animated Series and to a lesser extent the Arkham video games which were coming out at the time. And first of all, Harley was massively popular and I don't mean the popularity that people project now uh, which I honestly don't think exists in that way. Like, she is not a popular character anymore. Not as the actual character. She might be recognizable, but she does not have a fan base that actually knows her, that actually conglomerates around her. Not like she used to. Back in 2015 or so, um, uh, or 2014, whatever year, um, she was a legitimately popular character, even if she wasn't as uh, recognizable to the mainstream. But I mean, fans of Batman loved this character, uh, genuinely loved this character. You could not find a Batman fan who I think wouldn't say that she was um, one of the, they had a special place in their heart for her or that she was a fan favorite character or something like that. Like she was just so massively popular. And at that point, I knew that if she just got a really good representation in film then she could just be such a massively popular character in the mainstream along with the Joker the way that he is very popular and the Joker still is very popular but like it um, but what made this character really connect with me in a way that no other character had once again watching Batman the animated series is that she was a vulnerable character in a mainstream property because Batman is mainstream. Batman the Animated Series was the most popular animated show of its day. She was a character in this, this mainstream thing on that level that was allowed to be vulnerable as a female character in a way I had never seen before. Uh, like, she had a massively low self-esteem and a dependency disorder. You look it up, Harley has all the, uh, classic Harley has all of the symptoms of someone with a dependency disorder. And, uh, you know, she was completely fixated on the worst person possible. And that is what made me want to research the character in the first place. Because I'm like, to have someone in love with the Joker sounds like the worst, most insane thing possible. And I, I, I got into the character from that. And I'm like, 
it works. It, she is just the, the exact kind of character who would be in love with the Joker. And it makes uh, total sense for her. And it's insane. And But the characters really worked with each other. And, you know, there was a lot of tragedy involved with that. Um, uh, that she was a character who essentially... Uh, fell from grace. Well, well, she was never, if you go to the original Batman stuff, she was never a good person at heart, um, uh, which is explored in her original origin story, but she was basically this character who descended into complete madness over this, and importantly, what really got me about it is the fact that she didn't choose to get away from that situation, didn't choose to get away from the Joker. That really, really got me that they they did that because, you know, it made me think about those kinds of abusive dynamics in a way that I hadn't before about um, the way that a person, like what happens if a person doesn't uh, choose to get out of it? Because in real life, sometimes people don't and how that can be a cycle. And if, you know, a person do never acknowledges the toxicity of their dependence to someone, then, you know, that can just go on forever unless you make a choice away from it. And so that was like very impactful for me more than any other, you know, empowered female character story that I've ever seen to have it actually explore the consequences of a character who does not change. And it was just important for me to continuously you know, have this vulnerable character. And if you read, and I guarantee most of you haven't, like the original, you know, origin story of the character and what they would do with it, like, there's a lot there about exploring abusive dynamics. Like, for example, if you read Harley's original origin story in her mind as she's narrating to the audience her backstory with the Joker and all of that, she's narrating as if the Joker is just this misunderstood soul, If he's as if he's just this silly person who just wants to make people laugh, as if, you know, their interactions were a lot more romantic but then the pictures of the comic show a much different picture where we can see that something's wrong we can see that she's being seduced by a crazy clown character but she in her inner dialogue just can't seem to see that and that is a very true and powerful statement about what happens in abusive situations in general that people have a difficulty when they're in them seeing that objectively and well, everyone else on the outside might say it's obvious you shouldn't be doing this, but this was a story that explores how people in those situations have trouble seeing that objectively, which is another way that I think it really worked because it's a story with that kind of catharsis where you can see, oh no, this is how it works. Even if I didn't realize that you might even, you know, look back in your own life and see this made me realize something about myself that I didn't through this story. So very good stuff. And with Harley, we barely get to see it anymore. But, you know, a, a lot of stuff about the, the, the they did this in this Harleen book. Um, and that led th that author led the character down another path that was not good. We'll talk about that in a minute. But in that book, it was one of the rare times since, uh, in the years since, where we finally got to see the character taken seriously again and explored with the psychology of someone who is really, um, you know, breaking down and, and why somebody might completely fall into insanity. And uh, with that, it, it kind of ties back into the theme that all Batman characters have and why Batman characters are popular uh, is because all Batman characters have an obsession with something like uh, Two-Face is obsessed with duality, Joker is obsessed with Batman, Poison Ivy is obsessed with plants, uh, Harley is obsessed with the Joker. Like, that's the pattern. Every Batman villain pretty much has an obsession with something that consumes them and tears them down. And Batman has an obsession with his parents' death, except for he tries to use it for good, and that's what makes him different. He's trying to forge his grief and, you know, his obsession into something good. Uh, but that's why it, may it makes Batman's rogues gallery especially very interesting is they all have, you know, very, very human flaws and it, it, it's, there's a very, uh, when done right, there's a very much a complexity to them and all that you can explore with that and just, they're just very, very human characters. Now, that's why Harley was important and that's why she worked and she, you know, it was tragedy and comedy in the same character and that was what really drew people to her and she had, used to have a distinct personality, one that's been forgotten and that's what we're going to get to now. She's been a character that has never been understood by DC Comics. Now, if you know the history, you know that Harley essentially stayed around. She was a one-off character and that fans loved her so that's why she stayed. So she is a character who has been promoted by fans. 
But unfortunately, uh, she was a character who started in a cartoon. And unfortunately, when she got to the comic book realm, those people did not understand her. In her first forte into comic books, she barely spent any time with the Joker. She barely appeared in Batman comics, period. There was never a, much more of a deeper explana uh, uh, exploration of who she was. They didn't know what to do with her for years, it would seem. And uh, But then Arkham Games came back and started to portray the character classically, which is why she started getting so much popularity in the modern day. Day. Comic books still didn't get it, though, and they just sort of kept floundering with the character and trying to change her and modernize her, but it wouldn't work. So they started to try to portray her as Deadpool. And uh, for a time, as they were really promoting that and really trying to write off of the popularity of Deadpool comics, they started to make some money from that. And, and P I, I hate those comics with Deadpool Harley because they introduced just, they were like, it, it was the worst parts of Deadpool where they made her overly gross, like because uh, they started making the character have so many jokes about assault and like her, the character literally assaulting people trying to hook up with everyone at once we are going to talk about some gross stuff coming up in the video so if you don't want that uh, uh, you better click off now because we have to talk about the gross stuff in order to explain fully so that was the first step in like gutting the character for a lot of fans but most people weren't reading comics at this time so it didn't really spread like wire wildfire but that was the start of inserting all of this gross stuff in the character but even then even then the character still retained her identity that she was supposed to be a psychiatrist fallen uh, into insanity, obsessed with the Joker, all of that. She still maintained that. And apart from comics, she was still portrayed regularly. But the unfortunate thing that happened is her introduction to the mainstream in 2016. And I could have told you this seeing it a mile away, that there is just no way they would have had a character with this kind of story, a vulnerable female character that is defined by her vulnerabilities and where that is what's important to her um, survive in this in this uh, day and age. So um, I should have seen it coming that as soon as the character was being introduced into the mainstream, all of a sudden she started to become problematic. All of a sudden she started needing to be changed. All of a sudden we start, I started seeing all these articles coming out about how, like, what's wrong with her and, and how the character needs to change from her original self. And she needs to be redefined. She needs to be rewritten. And so from there, we started to see that actually take place. And it started in the mainstream with Suicide Squad. Now, for those who don't know, the original plan for Suicide Squad was to make it about Harley getting over the Joker. And then they went back on that. And there's some history with that, but we won't get into it now. But uh, here is where we see the character's core needing to be changed, where the, the personality was starting to be changed in the comics, but she overall still had the same core of the character, even if the comics were taking her in a direction many people didn't agree with. But now the core of the character had to be changed. She could not be a tragic character anymore. She could not have the abuse storyline anymore because it was too problematic. It was too, like, what would the message would this send to girls who want to dress up as a psychotic clown character? Gee, I don't know, maybe that the psychotic clown character wasn't a character to aspire to be like in the first place. But anyway, um, that is why in 2016, two things happened. One, you saw in Suicide Squad, they ha they couldn't even have the background of abuse between Joker and Harley. There was a little bit, and that's what caused a lot of controversy because people questioned, is the movie romanticizing abuse? But what they were trying to do in Suicide Squad is sanitize the character. They were trying to remove all the scenes that they could in the film to then change Joker and Harley into something else, like into more of a Bonnie and Clyde couple or whatever. And in the comics, they made Harley get over the Joker completely, but they did it in a way that was completely out of character. They had already made main, many, many changes to Harley already, making her into a completely different character to make her get over him. They In the scene where they made Harley get over the Joker, they changed Joker into like this weird pervert kind of character. And it was really, really awful if you know who these characters Characters are supposed to be, you know, from written by writers who already were kind of perverse in what they would write. But it was, it, you know, the, the entire point was we're going to rewrite this character now because she's not acceptable to the mainstream the way she was. But that's that's really the key is that as we're seeing them try to rewrite the character, we're seeing them, you know, as they're trying to change this so-called problematic story, 
that they're they're doing other things that are wrong like in suicide squad a lot of people thought you tried to rewrite their relationship but now you're making it seem like you know joker and harley are supposed to be a romantic thing when they're not in the comics they are making harley get over the joker and saying that she's independent but at this point she had become more of a gross character than ever before like the the kinds of things that these writers would put in these comics um you know harley goes to a comic-con hooks up with an entire room of joker cosplayers you know uh, a, a dog i i have to say this i'm sorry they did a, a panel where a dog uh, starts to try to get with harley because she's in a dog a dog outfit this is the mildest way i can describe these things they had turned her into a polygamous character who just you know you know would have a girl on the side and who would try to hook up with everyone you know it was just sort of anything goes, put anything in this comic, editorial won't say no kind of stuff. So it's like, you're saying that for, for all intensive purposes, morality reasons, you're changing this character in this way, but you're making her worse in other ways. And now you're trying to advertise her as a feminist icon, an icon of empowerment, even though she is in some ways worse than ever, still never a character one should aspire to be. Like before it was straightforward, you can relate to the character in her flaws, but you shouldn't aspire to be as her. And now the character was all the, all these bad things, but you're supposed to inspire aspire to be like her apparently. Harley's insanity went from something that was tragic to something that all of a sudden was just, you know, for fun. That's one of the big changes that made it. It started to become what made her so cool. Harley's mental illnesses started to become what made her so cool, not something that was supposed to be seen as a tragic thing. And I knew when they did this, because I, I knew taking Harley away from the Joker would be like taking away Batman's parents' death. It would be like, um, you know, it's not that Harley's only personality trait is the Joker. That's a misconception in and of itself, but it's basically like taking away the trunk of a tree, cutting out the trunk and expecting the branches to stay up. Like that was the core of why she was Harley. That was the core why she had any kind of meaning beyond all of the, the silliness and all of that is because you had that storyline. That was what made her an actual character with depth. And she used to be written, you know, with, um, different facets to her. Like the idea in the original stuff used to be Harley, the silly persona is just a mask. And I knew, like, this is why people ultimately liked the character. And, like, this is, like, that is the substance that's gonna, that would last with people longer than any sort of costume or anything like that. And I, I said, the character's gonna become less popular if you do this because she's not gonna make sense anymore. Like, the only reason Harley is supposed to be Harley Quinn is because she was infatuated with the Joker and she was trying to impress him, which is why she took on that persona. Like, that doesn't even make sense anymore. Why is she still this character if she hates him? But when that happened, because the same people who pr pushed this to happen in the first place were still around, I got told so many times not not by anyone in real life but you know through the internet because no one would dare to talk to me like this in real life but through the internet got internet got told so many times and i know other people got told so many times that i am an abuse supporter if i defend who this character was if i call out this change as bad if i state the obvious that the character is not going to be popular like this I got told I'm abuse supporter. I got told that I'm trying to regress the character. I got told I hate the character because I don't want her to evolve. I got told that um, I just don't understand writing, which is laughable. I got told so many, you know, things that were basically negative to me as a person rather than coming against my arguments about it, trying to explain who this character was why I disagreed with where it was going, you know, even calling out the hypocrisy, like, why can't you guys acknowledge this character is becoming more abhorrent in other areas as you're trying to cheer her changing to be some kind of role model? No one listened, and it made me think of this, because through all this, we would get celebrations of the feminist icon for Harley, and how she's so important to women, and how you know, uh, this is important character for women because of what she says about getting over abuse. So many times told that this is what her fans want and this is important for women. Uh, and I'm just wondering, you know, 
why don't doesn't my opinion as a woman who loves this character matter or any of the other fans who are female fans who disagree with this direction because you know some of them uh, not me but some of the fans who disagree with this direction were fans of the character since she first came out and were part of the movement promoting this character to keep appearing and stuff and who it really meant something to have a female character that's vulnerable for once and that explored these topics and so you're doing this for women but the opinions of women who love this character don't matter but then as they're doing this uh they just started putting the character in such gross stuff and some of it i think is trying to mimic deadpool uh, some of it but other times you know i've just watched this stuff for years seen it happen and other times it's like it almost feels like people use the controversy over this character and the joker and all of that to um, mold her into whatever they want and what they wanted was something gross. Like, for example, Bruce Timm designed the character for Batman the Animated Series, but he merely designed her. He's never really actually, if you actually read interviews with him, he's never been really attached to this character in that way. He actually wanted her killed off in Return of the Joker, which Paul Dini came up against him. But Bruce Timm does this movie with her, and she becomes like this raunchy disgusting character who, with just the crudest humor who pretty much assaults Nightwing at one point infamously. They, they made the character start to assault people constantly and that version of the character was based off of what she had become in the comics for those who don't understand why she did that. Um, she had just become so gross and raunchy and making the character assault people constantly as if it's funny. It, it, you know, making the character that you claim is supposed to be empowering for abuse victims abuse other people and laugh at it as a joke, which is just hilarious for the people who think that's funny. And, but it, it would just keep getting worse because I paid attention to what the comics did with the character. Now, at best, she ceased to have an identity in comics. And I read the comics that would come out. And in some cases, it wouldn't be as gross as it had been with certain writers. But one thing was for sure, whatever comic you pick up with the character, she had no identity. She could be super serious person who just happened to wear clown clothes. She could be Deadpool. She could be a silly Bugs Bunny character. She could be not safe for work. She could be um, uh, the most disgusting thing you've ever seen. She could be for kindergartners. Uh, you know, she had no consistent personality, no consistent anything. The only consistent thing about her that I've noticed over the years is they need to make, they have to make sure that she hates the Joker, even though that is the exact opposite of what her character has to be. But remember, that was the controversy. That was the controversy that made them have to change her. Like, she can do anything. She can be this disgusting, um, a grapist character. I don't know if I can say the word on here. She can be all of this, but she cannot have any sort of infatuation with the Joker. Like, she can... Uh, I'll just tell you some of the stuff. Once again, censors on. Uh, at one point, DC Comics hired this woman who was a former lady of the night. I don't know if YouTube will let me use the actual word to write this character. Uh, she was doing a, um, a spinoff book from the animated series that they put the character in. And the entire series that she did was just basically her using the characters of Harley and Ivy to insert her own fetishes into them. How does a mainstream DC comic insert this with their characters who are supposed to be icons to the public in it that you still put on merchandise for kids. And I, you know, I think that I've shared enough with you in terms of like, just giving you an idea of what they've done with this character. Remember, the one constant thing with this character has been, but she needs to be away from the Joker because she needs to be, she needs to grow. She needs to be a positive example. D does the character I've just described sound like a positive example to you? So they took this character that meant a lot to me and they made her, in the name of morality, become the worst thing I have ever seen. So we had Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League come out earlier this year and so many people, like, you know, people uh, rejected things like Batman and Harley Quinn. Uh, most people didn't watch things like Birds of Prey and the Suicide Squad, which comparatively I don't like, but they like th that's nothing compared to what I've seen them do with Harley. But Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League had a lot of similar things. They had that weird moment where 
Harley is hitting on a child version of Ivy. They retcon the character again to be all about hating, you know, she's gotten over the Joker off screen, even though that has nothing to do with the Arkham version. And because remember what I said that the mo Harley's popularity really got kicked off in the modern day by the Arkham video games, taking her back to her classic roots. And I saw so many fans finally waking up to, oh, yeah, they've completely destroyed this character from anything she was meant to be. And, you know, that is when the other shoe dropped and was like, yeah, you know, it's come full circle ever since she became so legitimately popular from the Arkham games. No one likes the character now, comparatively speaking. Maybe you like her because you've seen her on merchandise, but in terms of the actual content put out, few people actually like this. And they just keep shoving her in so much DC content and making people hate her even more. And so now with all this in mind, we come to why I was so upset by that article about Cape Crusader. Because, you know, I, I've had to take a step back. I took a step back from reviewing DC Comics. You know, I saw this thing about Cape Crusader and I'm like, you know, it's from, uh, you, you know, it's some, a classic Batman cartoon kind of thing. You know, Harley's at least looks like a jester. It might be a more serious take. I have more confidence that there might be, like, something that's at least okay about this. And then I open up the article and see yet another declaration of, oh, this is another version of Harley that is over the Joker or had never associated with him in the first place. The animators are priding themselves on, look at us, we made Harley apart from the Joker. And I'm like... As if that's a good thing, because I've seen for the past 10 years all of the gross stuff, all of the hypocrisy that has gone in to the destruction of this character all over the fact that some people behind the scenes wanted to virtue signal about how we're making Harley into a strong character apart from the Joker. Yeah, right. I hope that makes sense about why I got so upset but for all us fans who have been vocal about this being a bad direction and even now are vocal about how much hate is levied at this character now. They still won't let up with it. I don't think that there's going to be anything bad, like, in or gross in that new Batman show, but it's like, it's just a reminder of the hypocrisy and how the people behind the scenes did not take care of this character. They let it be destroyed in the worst way possible. And when that happens, you kind of become disillusioned with this company, you know, creating these characters and these icons as a whole. If you're like, these are the people doing that. And that's why I had to take a step back from paying attention to DC stuff in general. But this is setting the record straight. This is the most destroyed character I've ever seen in my life. I have never seen a character, a storyline, a property gone this far. It doesn't matter how many times that these people behind the scenes want to pat themselves on the back as if they've done something good. No, this is the truth. And, you know, getting the truth out there is all I can do. But, uh, that's all I got for today. Thank you, patrons, as always, for supporting my channel and this video. Um, I'm, I'm glad that I at least got this out there. And if you enjoy these rants, then let me know about it in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time.